Hi, I'm Stephen Anthony Bailey. Welcome back to the Actors Vlog. This is episode number six. Today, I'm going to be talking about one of the most important parts of your acting business. It's your agents and your managers, your representation. I want to talk about how to deal with them, how to sign them, how to become their favorite client, whether it's your agent or manager, the percentages they get in your contracts, uh, when to know when to leave, and you know how long to stay. So first off, let's just talk about what the differences are between an agent and a manager. Your agent's main focus is to pitch you to the casting directors and to make sure that they are submitting you every single day for every single project that you are right for. Um, some people think that their agents aren't necessarily submitting you all the time. They are. It's their business too. Think of it this way. If they don't make you money, they don't make money. So why would they not submit you for every possible role? Now some agents do have a policy that they won't uh, submit you for ultra low budget feature films where it's $100 a day because then they're only getting $10 a day. Whereas if they're really focusing their time on pitching you for NCIS for a guest star, they could be making you know, $300 a day off of you uh, when you do work. So they're trying to get you on the biggest shows as possible or the biggest films. They want you to be working with Steven Spielberg. They don't want you to be working on some non-union, non-paying theater show on some street that nobody ever goes down. Okay? So, um, and the same thing goes for managers. Now, the difference between an agent and a manager, the agent's job is to get you the audition. The manager's job is um, a little more widespread than that. Um, Technically, managers aren't supposed to be getting you auditions. That's not their job, but they do it anyway because why not? That's they, again, they only get paid if you get paid, so they want to get you as many auditions as possible. But their job is also to help you uh, create your brand, which we've talked a bit about in some of the past Actors Vlog videos. They're going to help you to structure your brand to make it as accessible as possible, to make it as uh, to give it as much commercial value as possible. When I say commercial value, I don't just mean for commercials. I mean for movies, TV, theater, uh, whatever it is. They they just want your brand to be as strong as possible. They want you to appear to be completely put together, even if you are just getting started. They want you to have your best foot forward. So they're going to help you decide what headshots to use what clips to use for your reel, is your reel too long, how to label your reel, how to put it in Actors Access or whatever casting site you might be using at the time. They're going to help you, uh, you know, they can help you with what to wear to an audition. They're kind of the catch-all for all things. If an actor has a question, you can go to your manager for advice, for help, and, and say, what are your thoughts on this? Now, your relationships with these people are going to be very important, but we're going to get to that in a second. Let's talk about first how to get an agent or a manager. There's a few different ways. Um, you could be doing a, a theater show and or have your short film on YouTube and maybe they see it, maybe they get in contact with you. Um, for instance, my first manager, I was doing Hairspray, the musical, and I signed with my first manager who only wanted me for film and TV and commercials and things of that nature. He didn't get me theater jobs, but he found me in a theater and he wanted to sign me because he liked what I had. So that's how I got my first manager. You can be doing something and get picked up, or you know, you can be a referral by one of your actor buddies. Um, ask, ask, ask your friends that are actors who are signed. Say, would you be comfortable? giving me a referral to your agent. First ask if they like their agent, if the agency is getting them out a lot, if they have a good relationship with their agent, etc, etc. Make sure that uh, you look up their roster on IMDb Pro and see, okay, do they have anybody that's like me, that looks like me, that has similar credits. Are those people that do look like me, if they only have a couple of them, are they working? Um, look how many clients they have. That's something that's very important to me personally. If my manager had a hundred clients and it was just him in a boutique management company, that would kind of be a red flag to me. But if he's got like between 30 and 60, okay, you don't have so many clients that I feel like you don't know who I am. Same thing goes for your agent. If it's a, a three agent agency and each agent has 200 clients, I wouldn't necessarily want to be signed with them because they're not going to pay particular attention to you specifically. But if you can't, if you're just getting started and you can't get anyone else, you got to take what you're given. Beggars can't be choosers. Take that first agent. Learn how it works because I can give you all the advice in the world in this video, but nothing is going to 
explain it to you better than life experience. And that goes for anything I've ever said. You have to experience it firsthand. I can sit here and talk to you for hours and hours through these videos, and until you do it, you know, it's, it, you gotta hit the ground running and you have to get that experience in real life. But uh, my goal is to, as you're going through those experiences in real life, have some light bulb, oh, Steven said to do this, or Steven talked about this before, so that you know what's normal, what's bad, what to look out for, and what to go for. But again, with these agencies, when you're looking them up, do they have a good reputation? I always Google the name of the agency and put the word scam at the end and see if anything pops up. If anything pops up, I know I'm not going there. Um, look up their reputation. Your reputation is just as important. When you're submitting to an agent, sometimes it feels like, uh, you know, I'm not good enough. They're going to look me up and, and think poorly of me. Well, the same thing goes the other way. We need to be diligent on making sure that the agent is going to be the right agent for us as they're looking at us. Are they going to be the right actor as a client for me as an agent? We need to vet each other and make sure that we are the right fit for each other because that's half the battle right there. Are you a fit for that agency and is that agent a fit for you? Do they understand your brand? Do they care about you as a person? Now, I know a lot of actors who are emailing their agents every single day, calling them, asking for a submission list. They're hounding these agents. They're wasting so much time and becoming a bit of a nuisance to their agent instead of letting the agent do their job. An agent is just as busy as a casting director because these casting directors and these agents, there's so many of each of them. There's so many agencies and so many managers and so many casting directors and they're all just trying to connect with each other to get you in the room. But again, when you're signing this agent, make sure that you find that they have a good reputation. If they come from a, a referral and they're referring you, that's always a good thing. You can e do an email submission. A lot of agencies are doing that now. Some still want the hard copy uh, cover letter especially if you're in New York, they want the hardcover copy letter, hardcover resume, and the physical copy of your headshot sent in an envelope to their office. Now the thing is, is that gets kind of expensive, and that's one of the things that I'm really excited by Actors Access, and that agents and casting directors are all coming around to where we don't have to be sending out a million postcards and a million headshots, and then handing the headshots in when we go to these auditions to all the casting directors, and this, that, and the other thing, driving around, a lot of it is done electronically, which saves us money because we need to be spending that money on staying in class, spending that money on producing our own content, spending that money on a theater show or whatever it may be, uh, acting books, I don't know. Whatever you're spending your money on as an actor, it's expensive to be an actor. I explained what it, how much it costs to be an actor to my aunt and uh, it, the way I was explaining it, sounded, it sounded like a scam. <laughs> and to be honest, that's not far from the truth. What we're doing here is expecting to hit the lottery or, you know, we're expecting the world to let us play pretend for a living. It's crazy, but it can be done. But you got to make sure that you have good representation. So pretty much everything that I said of how to get an agent uh, can go for the manager as well. Uh, with internet submissions, referrals, hardcover submissions sent to their offices. The other way, you, or, you know, like I said, being seen in a movie, a uh, TV show that you may book, uh, a play, a short film, whatever, maybe a sketch. The other way is to do a showcase. Now, it depends on what region you're in. If you're watching this from, you know, Iowa, I'm not really sure how it works in your city, but if you're in one of the major hubs, you can do a showcase where you will do a scene in front of all of the agents and managers and casting directors that may be invited to that showcase, do a scene for them. And how I go about that is, I will email all of those agents about a week before I go to that showcase to say, hey, I'm going to be there, this is who I am, here's my headshot, here's my resume, my link to IMDb, I'll see you there. So now they're going to see, they've seen me, that email saying I'll see you there, then they're going to see my scene that I performed for them, and then afterwards you strike up a conversation and you get to know them a bit better, because again, you want to make sure you like them and that they like you, and that it strikes a good relationship, because that's all we're doing here, whether it's with fellow actors or agents or directors or producers or managers or casting directors, we need to set good relationships up. It's a people business. That's all we're doing here. We film relationships. The movies and the TV shows that we make are all about relationships. That's all this is. So once you uh, do one of these things, perhaps you get an email from a manager or an agent saying, hey, I'd like to take a meeting with you and see if you're a good fit for our agency. Go in, dress nicely, don't go in flip-flops and cut-off shorts. You want to make yourself, present yourself as the brand that you are 
in the um, in the meeting. Now, if your brand is, well, I'm going to play a bunch of uh, trashy kind of uh, low-life evil characters because I know that's so fun. Don't go in with you know grease on your face and you know again cut off shorts and boots and holding a crow. No, don't do all that. Uh, suggest it. Suggest what you can do. I'm not saying go to the meeting in a suit, but I'm also saying don't go too far on either end of that spectrum. Go in professional. Um, for me, I play a lot of blue collar types. I play a younger brand too, so what I'll do, I like to just do the whole LA casual, business casual thing. I'll go in with jeans and tennis shoes, but I'll still wear a blazer and a t-shirt to suggest I can, this is who I am. You know, I want to suggest enough of what I can play, but also still show I am a professional. In the meeting, be confident and be relaxed. You're not going to change who you are. You have to present your truest self to that person to show them you're sane, you're not crazy, <laughs> and we're actors, so we're all a little bit crazy, but that you're professional, that you're on time, that you're well-spoken, that you're confident. These are all the things they're looking for. If they sense that you're timid or that you're flaky or that you showed up late or any of these things, your meeting is already over. They're not going to sign somebody like that. They want to look at you and see, can I send them to an audition? Will they make it on time? Will they go in with their lines memorized? Will they show up to set and be able to handle showing up to set on time, etc., etc.? They're looking for all of that in that first meeting because your first impression is the most important impression. So go in there and be professional. Have your materials ready. Have your resume and your headshots ready. Have your reel ready. Um, if, they're, if you don't take a DVD of your reel, already send them a link to your reel in the email. So when they ask about it, say, I emailed it to you right before this meeting. Now, in that meeting, some of them are going to go well, some of them are not. It's just like in life. You're going to meet people who you strike a conversation up with, and it, it sparks fly, and you're best friends in the first five minutes. Other times, you'll meet people, and it's very flat, and, okay, nice to meet you, thank you, and you go about your business, and you forget about that person, they forget about you, and those, that's not the agent for you anyway, so don't be bummed if that doesn't work out. That's just not the agent for you. They didn't get you. You want somebody that gets you. Same thing with managers. Same thing with casting directors. They all need to get you. The, th the thing about having an agent, again, I talked about it a little bit before, don't hound your agent, don't hound your manager, but feel free to, you know, you want to set, you need to know your boundary, but, and you need an open line of communication. If you do have an honest question, um, make sure you're staying in communication asking those. Because uh, they do want to answer you. They don't want you going in and making mistake after mistake after mistake because they want you to book the casting director office. They want you to book the role. So make sure you are asking the questions. But don't hound them over every little thing. Um, and uh, But also, you know, again, it's that same thing about the spectrum. You don't want to be the person who never stays on your agent's radar, but you don't want to be the person that's hitting them up every day saying, what's going on, why are we not booking, da da da, da. Now, if you're not getting any auditions from your agent and your union, you have headshots and a demo reel and this, that, and the other thing. You've got a problem there and uh, you need to talk to the agent about it because this is a business, this is your business as well as his or her business and you want to find out one, what is the problem and two, if we can't resolve the problem, it's time to move on. And that's my next thing that I got to talk to you about is when to know when to walk away. Obviously if you feel like there's anything scammy going on, not only do you need to try to get out of your contract, eliminate the contract, and then let everyone else know that this agent's a scam. Now, if it's not a scam, if this agent is just doesn't get you or isn't getting you the auditions like we talked about, um, talk to them about it first. You know, you want to set a good precedent of, I'm trying to communicate, I'm trying to be the best client for you that I can be. How can I do that for you? If you're getting a no response or a bad response or you feel like it's just not working, then you can get out of that contract, not renew the contract, and move on. It's okay to move on. There's a lot of different agents. There's more fish in the sea. It's just like dating. Not every date is going to turn into marriage or whatever it may be. But uh, you don't want to jump ship too early either. Don't be jumping from agent to agent to agent every two months. This is a small town. Every town you're in when you're acting is a small town. And they all talk and they will all hear about you. And if you're jumping from agency to agency, you know, I know certain actors that have done that and now they can't get an agent. Um, but you don't want to stay too long either. You don't want to stay for 
four years and only have gotten six auditions the entire time, get out of there. Go find somebody else. Now, let's talk about how to become your agent or manager's favorite client. It's really easy. It's everything we've talked about in all the previous vlogs. Are you in class? Are you creating your own content? Are you doing theater? Are you doing showcases? Uh, are you going to workshops? Are you doing play readings at your house? What are you doing? Are you staying busy? Did you get new headshots every six months to 12 months? Are you up uploading new uh, uh, clips to your demo reels? Are you doing everything that you need to do to give them the best possible package to send out to casting directors? Are you staying in, uh, in contact with them? I would say hit up your agent at least once to twice a month. I wouldn't do too much more than that. Just say, hey, how's it going? If you haven't heard from them, say, hey, how's it going? Give them an update. I send my manager an update once a month letting him know what I'm doing. I'll let them know, hey, here's what show I'm doing. You don't have to come, but here's what show I'm doing. Here's what sketches I've released. Here's what classes I've taken, what casting directors I've met with, etc., etc. I do let them know um, if there's absolutely something I've heard about that I think I'm right for, I will say, hey, can you submit me to this? But 99 times out of 100, they've already submitted you for it. Uh, again, they want to book you. They want to get you working because if you get working, you get them money in their pocket to keep their business going as well. We're all working together. Try to be your agent or manager's favorite client, their best client. And uh, it never hurts to send them birthday greetings and, you know, I send my representation a uh, Starbucks coffee card and a Christmas card for Christmas. Uh, you know, little things like that to show them that you care about them, that you're appreciative and grateful for the work that they are doing. If it doesn't feel like they're working for you because you're not auditioning, because of this, that, and the other thing, again, talk to them about it, but don't just assume that, oh, my agent doesn't like me, my agent doesn't believe in me, my agent isn't submitting me or working for me. If, you know, if you're not getting out there, a lot of times it's you. Most times it's probably you. We can't just assume that these agents aren't working. That sets a bad precedent. You should always think, what can I do to further my career? Again, everything I've been saying is, what are you creating? Because if you're not creating an opportunity for yourself, you're not going to get very far. You can't just expect to be discovered and, oh, let's give this guy all the jobs because he looks right or whatever it is. I mean, nine times out of ten, when you get cast in something, it's the way you look. But that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, what are you doing right for your career right now to be your agent or manager's favorite client because it makes you so much easier to sell? you got to create the opportunity for yourself to get them to be able to know what opportunities that you're right for, for one thing, and two, to be able to give them the opportunity to get you the opportunity. Does that make sense? I hope it does. If you have any questions that I didn't really cover here about agents or managers, let me know. I know I ran through that very quickly. Again, guys, you just got to make sure that your marketing package is right. Good headshots. Keep them updated. Don't just take them, have somebody take them on their iPhone and upload that as your headshot. Get a professional photographer to do it for you. You can get really good headshots for between $200 and $400 a pop. They last between six months and a year. Yes, acting is expensive, I know, I know, but you have to do it. You have to be uploading those demo reels. I know actors who are union have headshots on Actors Access, but don't have a demo reel up. That is a huge problem. How No casting director is going to think you're ready to go on set if you don't even have enough video to upload a demo reel to Actors Access. They're not going to think you're ready. So you got to do something. You know, maybe you don't take your headshots on your iPhone, but you can always film a sketch on your iPhone or something. I would say stay away from uh, filming a monologue and just uploading a monologue of you looking right here at camera and only one angle. Do a scene, create a scene. It's not that hard. You can do it pretty easily and upload it to YouTube or wherever and upload it to your Actors Access profile and have a demo reel. It's very important. And make sure that your resume is easy to be read. I've gone over all this stuff. I'm just reiterating because this is what your agents and managers are going to want. Make sure your resume is professional, easy to read, very clear, and uh, only keep the most important credits on there. And, uh, you know, just make sure that you're doing all the right things, that you're in class, that you have the proper training so that a casting director would believe in you. It gives your agent something else to pitch you with. If I just say, you know, I'll be the agent for a second. Yeah, this is my client, Steven, and he has done a few sketches for YouTube. Can you bring him in? 
or hi this is my uh, this is my client Steven he's done sketches he's got a web series that he's producing and starring in he wrote it himself he's in class over at uh, you know Ivana Chubbicks or Leslie Kahn's or Playhouse West or wherever it may be he's uh, you know constantly doing theater shows he's a workaholic he's very busy he's really talented very great hard worker never missed an audition and uh, just had a call back with the Coen brothers whatever it is you know that is not that hard to be but that shows you that's how they're pitching you so be that one don't be the first guy that just has done a couple of sketches and is expecting the agent to be able to pitch you and have the entire world open up to you okay so again if you have any questions let me know uh, put it in the comment section and I'd be glad to help you out and uh, answer any questions that I may not have answered in this video um, and uh, you know keep working hard stay inspired always be doing something this is your craft this is your business so treat it like one get up every day and work as hard as you can all right i'm steven anthony bailey this has been the actors vlog we'll see you next time